Hey, it's Thorn, and uh, it's totally not the same day. Um, I put a hat on, therefore it's different. It's not just me overly caffeinated and um, catching up on my neglected YouTube channel. Um, this is not about the Pagan Challenge. This is actually just an update video. Um, you like my hat? I love this hat. This is actually the only hat I own, um, and I love it a whole lot. Um, anyway, I kind of just wanted to, to say words at you, Internet. Um, one of my closest friends, um, who's been with me through highs and lows. Um, my life has been super busy lately, and, uh, I was watching, um, Joanna DeVoe does um, an interview series on her channel that's really fun. Um, and anyway, she was doing an interview with um, Tiptoe Chick. Um, I, I was just kind of laying in bed watching this morning. That's what that's when I watch YouTube videos is like before I've committed to getting out of my bed. I just lay there with my phone and I'm just like, what's everybody doing on the internet, right? Before my brain wakes up. And um, anyway, they were talking about... Um, like the like 2009 on YouTube 2009 2010 and like phases on YouTube and kind of how fun it is to um Joanna called it um time travel right where you you've like we've all got favorite videos right or like favorite periods on YouTube and if those videos are still up like you can go watch them and it's like it is it's like transporting okay and um, anyway, it just got me thinking about YouTube and how, like, this whole channel started because, and I've never taken a video down, so you can, you can go back to, I think, 2011, um, and it's all there with my, my changing, sometimes really terrible hair colors. Um, and uh, I just, I really enjoyed watching kind of the pagan community on YouTube and I wanted to participate and I didn't really feel like there were a lot of people coming from this, the perspective that I was coming from. Um, and I just wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to chime in and I wanted, I wanted my people to be represented. Right. Um, and it's been really fun and I just never would have anticipated that I'd still be sitting here in 2016. Um, like making videos. And so like, that's really, that's really rad. Um, I, one of, one of the questions that I missed on the Pagan Challenge was about, um, like, spiritual, something spiritual that you do the most frequently, like, what's the thing that you do? I'm paraphrasing here because I can't find it. Um, but, like, what's the spiritual thing that you do the most? And for me, it's definitely uh, magical record keeping. Like, I am, I've made a lot of videos about, about books and about writing, and um, I am an obsessive record keeper. Um, and I always have been like when I read, when I read to ride a silver broomstick for the first time in silver Raven wolf, you get to like chapter nine and she's like, you know, that notebook that you've been keeping. Well, guess what? That's your first book of shadows. Whoa. And then like glitter hits you in the face out of the book. And you're just like, yes. Um, I took that very, very seriously. Like I, man, I experimented with different kinds of books and I had a binder and I had tabs and, um, Scott Cunningham, Guide for the Solitary Practitioner, he, uh, one of the things he does in there is he's got this list of, like, suggested tabs or su suggested categories you might have for your Book of Shadows. Um, and Silver Ravenwolf does something similar. Um, and I was just all about it. Man, shit, I had, like, all different kinds of notebooks and binders trying to find, like, the right system. And, um, what happened subsequently is that now in 2016, I have a dozen books of shadows, right? Like just my whole magical life is documented in embarrassing detail and it's awesome. And it occurs to me that the, the internet is the same way, right? Like this is still record keeping, like YouTube and your blog and your website, your journal, like whatever it is you're doing online, like that's part of your magical record keeping. That's part of the documentation of your life. And hopefully when the aliens arrive and they're trying to document, um, you know, the progression of human civilization, they will find YouTube and like the internet will be a thing and they can go, oh, um, and be amazed, right? Like the internet counts. The internet counts as magical record keeping, like it just does. Um, so congratulations.
my fellow YouTubers, because the shit that you're putting on the internet is important. Um, so I just kind of woke up thinking about that stuff today, which is why I wanted to make this stream of videos with different outfits to trick you into thinking that I'm actually just being consistent and making videos every day. Um, so anyway, back to my life. Um, I have had a really amazing summer. Um, it was last year when um, my, my coven mates pointed out to me, you know, I've always thought I was a fall person, right? Like Halloween and leaves changing and, you know, pumpkin spice lattes and whatever else. Like I always thought I was a fall person. And I, I, I said that and like everybody in, in Foxfire looked at me and they were just like, like, have you met you in the fall? Like, you're awful. <laughs> like, and they're right. Like, that's when my depression sets in. Like, that, like, fall sucks. Um, it might be beautiful outside, but it it's all dead and twisted on the inside. <laughs> okay. Um, summer is really when I do my best work. Even though it's hot and sticky and I really don't like pools, right? Like, like summer is when I do my best work. I've done so much reading this summer and... Um, I've gotten so much done. I try new things. And this was really the first summer that I went into summer being conscious of that about myself. Um, so I feel like I was able to kind of use that natural sort of bodily brain chemistry uh, to positive ends. Um, I decided to go ahead and sign up for my Praxis exams. Those are the teacher licensure exams for those of you who don't know. Um, and the way it works in North Carolina is that um, you can actually teach for something like two years after you finished your education program um, without passing Praxis. Like, you've got a window of time to do it. Um, I think it's because so many North Carolina teachers fail the Praxis, okay? Which, again, says something, but okay. Um, anyway, I decided that I was just going to go ahead and fucking take it because that's not how I roll. Like, I... I'm going to do the thing. I'm not going to push it up. I'm not going to put it off. Like, and I would rather do it early and just get it done. So I signed up for, um, there's like the principles of learning and teaching exam that everybody takes for whatever their level is. And then there's a content exam. So if you're a social studies teacher, you've got a content exam and you've got a different one if you're a chemistry teacher, etc. Um, so I took the English language arts content exam, um, which is like high school, right? English stuff. And Anyway, I took them. I took them back to back. I was just like, "Fuck it, we're taking we're taking these standardized tests," um, and I've been preparing for them all summer. Um, and part of the ELA content exam is passage recognition. So I, you know, you guys probably did the same thing, okay? Where you just kind of pretend to read some of those books in high school, right? Like, especially the internet became a thing right? When I was, when I was an adolescent. So suddenly you could, we didn't have Google yet. I don't, I remember, I remember using Ask Jeeves, right? Do you guys remember using that search engine? Um, like suddenly you could, you could just search the plots of books and you could kind of, like, you could kind of fake it. And usually you'd read like the first portion and then you'd kind of zone out and hope that all the smart kids would contribute to the conversation in class. So you could just look like you'd read the book. Well, I did a lot of that in high school. Um, and I decided that I would like to be a better English teacher than I was an English student. Uh, so I made myself a list of like classic canonical texts that I was finally going to read. And I, I, went, I went online and I found, you know, like 100 most important books that you can read in your life. And, you know, 25 most popular books in high school and that kind of stuff. And I made a list and I kind of just been plugging through this list and like, shit, like, like 75% of them are about, you know, boys who aren't quite men who go to war and die horribly. <laughs> like, there's been an awful lot of that going on for me this summer. Um, so I've read more fiction this summer than I have read, I think, in my whole life. Um, like, it's... It's been really good. I don't read fiction generally as a, it's not a, it's not a rule, right? But like when I have free time and I can read, it's just, it's just never fiction. Um, I like nonfiction. I like informational texts. I like academic texts. I like how-tos. Like, 
Um, fiction for me has always just felt like, and this, this is kind of like one of the premises of, of literature, right? Is that we have these like universal human experiences, right? And I would, I would debate that phrase. Okay. But as a secondary English teacher, I have to say things like universal human experiences. Um, and fiction is all about engaging with those universal human experiences. Okay. And never mind that a lot of them are white European human experiences, but what have you. Um, so you see the same tropes over and over again, and it gets to the point where every novel is the same novel, or it's like the same four or five novels. And you can pick up any book at the bookshop, and you can flip it over and read the back, and you can know, like, like there never really is a twist ending, right? Like nothing new under the sun and all that. Um, so I just kind of stopped reading fiction as I got older. Um, and it's been fun re-engaging with it. Um, it's still true, I think, that there's nothing new under the sun. Um, but it's like a different part of my brain than when I'm reading other kinds of texts, and it's been good to, to revisit that. Um, and I, I kicked ass on, on the standardized test, which was really great. I'm still waiting to get results for, um, the, the PLT test because that one had a bunch of essays and so it's actually graded by a real person and I think it'll be a month before I know. Um, but the ELA test is multiple choice and you get your score pretty much instantly. Um, so that was good. Um, what else? I signed up for a whole bunch of really scary races. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever really talked in detail about my running, um, but I've kind of been this half-assed runner for all of my adult life, okay? Um, I was just always really impressed by runners, um, especially like in, when I was in high school, a bunch of my friends were on the cross-country team, and I was just always really amazed by some of the things that they could do with their bodies. Um, and I was... I was awkward and I was overweight and I'd never really done sports and I just, you know, like I read a lot of books and I didn't, yeah, I was a couch potato. Okay. And I think I had it kind of drilled into me that I just couldn't do those things. Like because I was fat. Um, I think we, we, like we have this idea that fat people can't, can't be athletic, which is like really bizarre. Um, but I, I bought into that when I was a kid. And so I never tried things because I already assumed that I couldn't. And people were mean in gym, right? Like, you assume that because you can't climb the fucking rope that you can't do other things. And by the way, nobody can climb the fucking rope. Like, what even is that? Why do we still let kids do that? Um, um, and I finally found sporty things that I liked that I, that I could be good at um, as I got older. Um, and one of those things was running. Um, my first boyfriend was a runner and, um, I would go running with him and some of his friends and they, when they went to college, they, they were on their cross country teams. And, um, so I was just around runners all the time and I wasn't, I mean, we're only talking like, like a couple of miles for someone like me. Um, but I did it regularly and I did it consistently for years and I just never ran more than like three miles like that was that was kind of my thing and I do it two or three times a week but this went on for years um and then last year I just decided that I wanted to run a half marathon um it always just seemed like this impossible distance um I remember when I first, when I first started dating that first boyfriend, he was training for a half marathon and I just thought that was like the most impressive fucking thing in the whole world. Like he may as well have been like breathing fire or like, like I don't know, or time traveling. Like it was just so beyond my scope of comprehension. <laughs> um, and it would never have occurred to me that I could do something like that. Um, but last year I just... I wanted to take running more seriously. I had signed up for a 10k. Actually my... my my working partner in my coven, um, he and I did this 10 K together and I've never run that far. <laughs> like, um, he's just like naturally more athletic than I am. And, uh, so like, he's just like, whatever it was, we're going to run this 10 K. Um, and you know, he's encouraging me the whole way and it ended up being a really good experience, even though someone subsequently stole my iPod, which was really not very nice, not cool guy. Um, 
but I wanted to be better at running and take that more seriously and actually like, okay, if I can run this distance, then I can run more. My brother is extremely athletic. He is a cyclist and a marathoner and like, he's just one of those like, um, like golden children, um, that I could never live up to. But, um, and he said something really striking to me when I was, um, when I was in high school to the effect of like, if you can run, if you can run X distance, you can run twice that. Um, like if you can run three miles, then you can run six. If you can run 13, you can run 26. And I didn't believe him, but I kind of wanted to, to test him on that one. Hence the, the 10 K. Um, so I decided my new year's, my new year's commitment was, um, to run six races. And one of them had to be half marathon. Um, and the other one had to be, uh, the army 10 miler. Um, I reasoned that if I could run a half marathon, then I could also run 10 miles, right? And I may as well do it in my home, my home city, right? With the whole army watching. <laughs> um, so I ran my first half marathon in April and, um, it was pretty amazing. Um, I was a wreck by the end of it and I totally cried, but that's okay. Um, but anyway, I have subsequently, I promised six, I have to do six this year, right? I take these commitments very similarly, uh, very seriously. So I had only signed up for, I'd run two army 10 milers in October. That's number three. So yesterday I chose three more races that I have to do before January and two of them are half marathons. And I was journaling about it this morning and just shit, like three half marathons. Now I haven't done the other two, right? Like I could die. Um, but I'm, I'm giving myself credit now for signing up. So I don't know. I feel like this year has been, been really important and a lot of, a lot of good things have happened. So there's running. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to join a running club this year too. Like maybe, maybe if I'm around other people, cause I run by myself. Um, I don't like to run with other people. I don't like people looking at me when I run. <laughs> like I just, that's my, that's me being self-conscious. Um, but I think that'll be the next step is kind of getting over that and actually learning about running because I don't actually know anything. Okay. Like I just sort of go out and do it. And that's one of the reasons I struggled with the half marathon is I was like dressed inappropriately and like, I don't know what's going on like nutritionally. So like <laughs> things kind of start failing right around mile 10. Okay. Um, anyway, like this is, this has been the year of running and I'd like to get better. Um, what the hell else? I, like I said, I'm doing a lot of running and writing. Um, I'm experimenting with bullet journaling. Uh, I do not have time to explain this to you. So I could always, I'll put a link down below, but the premise of bullet journaling, journaling is basically like, imagine a very structured kind of to-do list coupled with a journal, coupled with just kind of your brainstorming it's a lot like a commonplace book, right? Like this whole like Jeffersonian idea where you have a, um, a notebook that you carry around and like everything goes into it. It's your scratch paper and your to-do list and your planner and your whatever. Um, so I've been doing that. Um, and it's actually been, it's been really fun. Um, anything that gives me an excuse to have um, a new notebook and use my fountain pens is really great. Um, so like, here I am. I'm thinking I'm going to revive my tarot newsletter. I really liked doing my tarot newsletter and I think it was just the year got in the way. So I'm planning on getting back into that. So like, here's ideas for my, my newsletter. Right. And then it's got my to-do list, but like, here's my running training schedule so that I can stop checking the internet every morning when I have to see how far I have to run that day. Um, and I journal a little bit and then it's got, um, I've been keeping a food diary um, just in the interest of, um, kind of figuring out nutritionally what I'm doing. Um, so I can not die at mile nine. That would be great. Um, anyway, it's been, it's been really fun. I'll put a, a couple of video links if you're curious. Um, if you're naturally into like planners and journaling, this is probably up your alley. It's super easy. Um, it's been really fun. Um, what the hell else? I am writing a book. 
Um, I think, you know, I've talked about, I'm sorry, this video is so long. I've had so much coffee and I'm wearing my hunting hat, right? Um, but I'm writing a book and I've mentioned this in passing on like Twitter or blogs or whatever. Um, but um, I finally have gone ahead and done it and I've, I've already submitted the proposal. Like that's what, um, that was one of my big goals this year. I'm still waiting to hear back, okay, um, but I've, like, plan B and plan C are all lined up to go. Like, I'm, I'm writing a fucking book. Like, I really don't, it hardly even matters, like, the response I get from publisher number one, okay? Um, and what's been really fun is that I, I've written proposals before. I've had book ideas before. I've, I'm always writing. Like, I have ongoing projects, but I've never actually completed something, gone through with it, done what I said what I said I was going to do. And I figured out kind of accidentally, the key for me is handwriting. Um, I really don't like computers. I never have. I hate typing. I hate my word processor. I, I can't stare at a computer screen. Like I have limits. Um, and so the prospect of sitting down and writing you know, however many thousands of words on a word processing program is daunting because that's just awful. It's like, it hurts my eyes. I hate it. My wrists hurt from typing. Like, I just, I hate it. Um, and it kind of occurred to me, why do I have to do it on a computer? Um, so I got myself a big ass notebook. Okay. And I carry this notebook with me everywhere. I started in February. I got back from PantheaCon and I was like, fuck everything. I'm writing a book. Um, I carry this around with me and I just write like when I, and I'm, I'm doing, I'm allowed to do things out of order here. Like when I have ideas for chapters or sections or whatever, um, and I just go with it and then I've got an index, right? So I can keep track of what I'm doing, but I am handwriting this shit. Okay. And it's actually been going really, really well. Um, I've got, I don't know, I mean, I'm probably like a third of the way here, just like, like, just in this book, and I transcribed it, and I put the proposal together, and like, this is just what's working for me. The idea that I could write by hand, um, it's great because it stimulates the part of my brain that's like artsy and likes color and texture. I get to play with ink, and I get to play with my fountain pens. Um, and just like the, like if you're, if you're any kind of like paper addict, like it's just really, really satisfying. Um, so I'm writing a book, um, and that's been going really well. Um, and you know, when I have those bouts of like imposter syndrome, I just, it's like what I said in the, in the video about affirmations, like I just, whatever, I've failed at way scarier things. Like I'm just going to keep doing it. And if it sucks, well, the next one will be better, right? Um, so that is my life right now. I go back to school next week. I'm doing student, student teaching this semester, and I've got my orientation on Tuesday. Um, I anticipate that it will mostly be moronic, because so far everything I've done in my education program has been moronic. Um, but this is the last step. Praxis is done. Classwork is done. Like, everything is done. Um, I just need to um, pass this class, right? I'm pretty sure I could get a D and my GPA would still be high enough to be um, acceptable. And that's obviously not going to happen because I don't get Ds. Um, so, yes. And then begins student teaching. So, that is my life right now. All is well. Oliver is good. Oliver is hiding somewhere. Um, I don't know. That's it. Um, I will talk to you guys later, and I'm going to go drink more coffee, because that's clearly what I need right now.